Good morning, good morning, good morning, this beautiful Tuesday morning. So, a lot of things going on in America, or in California, in Southern California. I don't know about the rest of the world, but it seems like this is a time we really need a few minutes to stop and think, and think about the sunshine, right? I mean, because, like, we were holding on, like, okay, 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 then bam, they started opening stuff up, so now we get excited, Ah, oh, we can breathe again. Bam! Not even a week and they're closing down again. So that can affect a lot of people. And it can feel worse than it even did before the previous three months. Because because it's like, we held on. It's like having a medical test that hurts. Okay, we know it'll be just a few more minutes. We can hold on. And then it's over and then it starts again. And it's like the second round seems worse for a lot of people. So... I hope I'm bringing you sunshine. This is like seven freaking minutes out of the day that if we just stop, breathe, take a moment to breathe and to learn something new. Maybe we get to smile. Maybe I'm goofy enough that I make you smile. That would make me happy if I could make you smile. I mean, if you think this is ridiculous, that's a good thing because that's this is what I'm doing is so contrary to our every day, the rest of our days. And that's the whole point for me. Some kind of like, stop, regroup, reboot. For me, that's what this does. I, lo I love sharing with you. Any ideas you have, any complaints, any changes, any suggestions, I welcome them, welcome them, welcome them. And you can find me on Facebook any time of the day or now on YouTube. I'll um, figure out how to uh, post that um, link to you. But it's changes, change, YouTube, changeless, change. That's where I am. So, um, okay, here we go. We're back in changeless, change. Remember back in the beginning when I started this, I don't know, two months, three months ago, I started with my book called Changeless, Change. I think this is, especially when, when times are tough, I have a hard time focusing on reading a lot. I just can read this snippet, that snippet, and I'm just like, bah, 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 bah. I don't know. Anyway, that's why I like this, because every page stands alone. And we'll get back to the children's books. I just want to take this little break and get back to this, because I think there's a lot of answers in here um, for how to live in this uh, shutdown thing. And starting with what we're reading today is nature's. I've found that in nature, the answers to all of life's problems are in nature. Yeah, probably even the shutdown. So let me begin the reading because I've already blabbed it for two minutes. And I love you for being here. Thank you so much. So um, here we go. Nature, nature, nature. On my, my journey from darkness to light, because I used to live in a really dark place. I began to see hope was in nature. When closely observing patterns in nature, I could plainly see answers to challenges and obstacles in my life. Hey, this is some true stuff. Answers to my problems in nature? Are you kidding me? Seriously, I really do love studying nature for clarity when I have questions about life, questions like, which way is really correct? There are as many answers as there are people, it seems. Different cultures, different colors, people unlike me. How come they dot, dot, dot? Why can't they dot, dot, dot? Which way is correct? In nature, there is no right, no wrong, just differences. When I observe nature, I see why diversity is so significant. There is no one way to do or believe or just be. You know, what we read uh, last week was the thing about seasons, you know, and about trees having their leaves and other trees not having their leaves. And nobody's judging. They're just going, oh, there's a tree with a leaf. There's trees with colors. There's trees with no leaves. That's what nature teaches me, okay? So moving on. Judgment in nature is unwarranted. That's what I was just saying. I was, and um, I'm going to tell you about the leaves again in a minute, even though we did it yesterday. Oh, that's pretty good. I was sitting on my porch one day watching a mulberry tree lose its leaves. I love this stuff. When I looked around, I saw another tree that was keeping its leaves. 
We never ask the questions of nature that we ask of each other. No one is going to judge a mulberry tree for losing its leaves while another tree keeps its leaves. And what about the multicolored leaves falling from a variety of trees in autumn? Granted, some people have favorite colors, but they, <clears throat> but do they become judgmental about the leaves of different colors? Hi, Jackie. Glad you're here. Reading about nature, how it helps us. I soon realized how boring the forest would be if all trees were the same. Diversity brings such beauty to the canvas. Like the trees, we all have a place and a purpose. We all have a place where we stand tall and express like no other. Even apparent calamities have a specific purpose, though we don't often see this during times of trouble. Did you know it only takes 30 seconds for a hailstorm to completely destroy a crop a farmer has nurtured all season? The hail doesn't care if it's just two days away from harvest. A hailstorm isn't personal. It is nature at work. So there's good and bad. Relationships often feel like hailstorms. Being in nature can remind us that relationships also have their cycles within circles. Speaking of nature and relationships, did you know people are like turnips? Mm -hmm. Some people love them. Some people hate them. But there's nothing wrong with the turnip. Hmm. Planting seeds or new ideas. We're still kind of in nature. I planted my first flower garden from seeds. Wow, what a project that was. Every day I went to my garden and stared at it, wondering how long it would take before a flower popped up. I watered my seeds and I fed them and I waited. After a few weeks, still nothing. I wanted to dig up the dirt to see if something was happening under the surface. But I continued to wait, and one day when I was not looking, flowers started to break the soil. I was so happy at that very moment. I knew I had learned to trust, to trust the process of an intelligence greater than me that expresses itself in me and in you and in those little seeds. How could each seed know what it should grow up to be if that were not the case? When we plant ideas into the universe, it often takes time for our thoughts to bloom or to manifest our visions. That does not mean nothing's happening. Sometimes when we plant seeds, it looks like dirt for a long time. No worries, the dirt is also part of the circle. Once my seeds grew into beautiful, recognizable flowers, the weeds somehow, without my permission, also appeared. Another lesson for another day. That's seven minutes. Hi, Mark. Glad you jumped on here. You can replay it later. Find it on Facebook. Or as I said earlier, you can find all of my broadcasts on my YouTube channel, Change This Change. Thanks for being here. Again, I'm open to ideas. See you tomorrow at 10. Thanks.